15 High Rocks races and what have we learned from running around in circles? Hey, what is happening people? Woodsy Workout here and today we are checking in fresh off of Birmingham High Rocks. Shout out to anyone that raced in Birmingham or Madrid last weekend. Today I wanted to talk about my training and how my race went and as always do so in a way that can provide you with some helpful insights. So Birmingham High Rocks was my 15th race in three years and it was my 11th solo pro race. I wanted to take this point to kind of reflect upon what has been working and then what needs to change. My last race was in June at the World Championships in Nice and to be honest, it was pretty horrendous. Uh, a combination of being a little bit run down going into it and a hot and humid venue just resulted in an absolute battle just to get to the end. Um, and so I, I knew it wasn't really a true reflection of the work that I put in and so for this race I was um, really hoping for a, a different outcome. Over the summer I spent a couple of months um, kind of away from High Rocks doing a bit more strength training um, and my running volume dropped quite a lot. I was more focused on my work and uh, I had my wedding but I still got at least one run in a week and then after uh, my wedding in August I picked the, the volume back up. So running volume was high in September and then I pushed the intensity um, in, in October. So heading into Birmingham, I felt my running had just come back to as good as it was before. Um, I hadn't done a huge amount of high rocks volume, but my body felt good and I felt healthy and fresh going into the race. The race itself went well. The first couple of runs, I was a little bit quicker than what I'd planned. Um, even though I was feeling good, I knew I should ease up. Um, I felt strong on the sleds, particularly the sled pull, which um, sometimes it can really start to drag, no pun intended, but that felt good. Um, throughout the middle part of the race, I was hitting most of my uh, target splits. And when I felt like I needed to push, my body responded well, which was, which was so much better than what it was in Nice, where I, there was just nothing left in the tank. So all was going well and I felt like I was, I was pushing hard without losing control, um, but I got to the lunges and I realized I was still behind time. So ignoring the, the, the threat of cramping coming on in my quads, um, I tried to really push on to finish the lunges and I did so in my, my target time of around three minutes 30. And then I was desperately trying to pick up the pace for the last run, but was, was starting to feel myself fade a little bit. And so I came into the wall balls at an hour and three minutes. And uh, my previous best time was an hour and seven minutes. So uh, I knew barring a, a miracle wall ball performance, I wasn't going to get my PB. And this is where I was a little bit disappointed because uh, I started to, to check out and ease up. Um, and really, I should have just still given it everything, but, but mentally I was a little bit less engaged. So my final time was an hour and eight minutes and 27 seconds. Uh, for the men's pro, that was about minute 15 off of my previous best. Uh, but what can we learn from it? On the positive side, I think my efficiency on the stations was really good. I normally would overtake people on the stations, even if they were initially going quicker than me. Um, I just stuck to my my technique, my strategy, and I think that really studying and perfecting those movement strategies in training and, and over the years, that has made it um, more efficient and more sustainable. So um, that's where I think I really excelled. Uh, and I've made a lot of videos on these techniques, so um, check out my deep dive series for more on that. And if you are looking for the best exercises to improve on those stations alongside your running and how to put it all together, then you can check out um, my Hyrox programs at coactiveperformance.com. I found my running, um, it felt good. I was able to hold pretty consistent splits um, throughout with only a bit of a drop off on the last run. What I think didn't work so well was I started to, with this race, I was very precise over um, times and splits. And I think I relied on that to, to sort of push me when actually the courses, they aren't standardized enough. 
to be that accurate with your targets. Um, after running Birmingham, and uh, I'd, I'd be interested to know what, what you guys um, thought, but I think that it had a, a bigger rock zone and shorter laps. So I needed to go faster on the running track to make up for the, the big rock zone. The trouble is, um, you don't really know that until after the event, and even then you're still not really sure, because you know the, the total distance with the runs and the rock zone is supposed to be 8.7, but high rocks don't specify um, if the runs are exactly 1K and the all of the rock zone is 0.7, or some sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer with um, the different venues. So with that, pinning everything on one time um, and comparing it to other races in other venues can be a bit of a, a misleading measure of success. I think it's better to use these races as motivation to train and as an opportunity to really push yourself and challenge yourself um, and not to completely ignore your times but to add context to them um, based on how you felt the race went uh, and also then use more like quantifiable benchmarks in your training in order to measure your fitness so things like a two kilometer row a 10k run 150 wall balls for time. These are, are black and white measures of fitness. So improving those will improve your potential to perform on race day. Uh, and if you do really want a, a new personal best, you need to be uh, a lot fitter than you were last race uh, and not just like slightly fitter or on par, which I think was the, the situation in my case. Um, but because of because of the course variations and because of every everything else that can happen on on the day, you need to be able to succeed in despite of like a slow course or despite of a, a busy running track or or whatever else. Um, and in order to be that much fitter, you need to be you need to have a, a really consistent stretch of progressive training. I think initially you can make a lot of uh, improvements race to race just by uh, gaining experience and almost like like it's like high rocks beginner gains you know um, you it's like when you first start in the gym you you could be doing everything wrong and still be making gains because it's just new uh, a new stimulus to the body but after that initial progress it becomes uh, harder and you need to decide either to race less and give yourself more time to develop your fitness or you can still race a lot but you can't expect to improve in every race and it may be better to treat some of those races as progressions because if you think about it, if you're trying to peak for every single race then you would taper the week of your race and then uh, you'll probably need a, a bit of recovery after your race. So that's like almost two weeks where you're not making progress, but the stress and the stimulation is still really, really high. Uh, and I think that's where I need to sort of reframe with my training. I still believe that I have uh, potential for more, but I can't keep doing what I'm doing and expect different results. So my plan moving forward uh, I've got a couple of doubles races in November, which will be, you know, just for fun. Uh, and then I won't be racing a solo high rocks for a while, partly because, a big announcement, uh, Woozy Workout is heading down south. So we are going to be traveling to South America for a couple of months in February and then spending a year working in Australia. So I'll have plenty of time to do sort of a, a long build. To, to work on my running and hopefully I'll give a good crack at one of the Australian High Rocks races in 2025. So with that being said, calling out any, any Aussies, let me know the best spots for traveling and training. Uh, and I will of course keep you guys updated along the way. And thank you again for everyone for their support. We are almost at 5,000 subscribers. So let me know in the comments, what challenge should I do for 5K subscribers? For 1K, I did 1,000 burpee broad jumps, so please, no more burpees. Check out coactiveperformance.com for high rocks plans and reach out to me on Instagram at Woodsy Workout for plenty more tips and tricks on all things health and fitness. Until next time, peace.